Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending September 27th. First article is from my friend Jeff, Really Too Ugly. This is from the website Inc.com, titled, The Top City to Start a Tech Company is Nowhere Near Silicon Valley. The cost of living is much lower in this city than in New York or San Francisco. They're talking specifically um, one of the places where Google actually recently did a really nice expansion, Omaha, Nebraska. And I'll just read a little bit from this article here. Sil Silicon Valley is the most obvious place to start a tech company, right? There are investors standing on every street corner waiting to hand out cash. Other entrepreneurs can teach you the basics in beautiful offices and beautiful office spaces with ocean views for rent. Um, not exactly true. In a recent study, I'll skip down, a recent study by the financial advice company Smart Asset, and then they did a little uh, uh, parentheses here, which deserves credit for the cheeky company name. It turns out Omaha is the top site. The biggest reason? The cost of living. The cost of living in Omaha is almost half that of San Francisco. It's amazing, according to this article, the number of Midwest cities that are much preferable just because of cost. Uh, no reason to spend all kinds of extra money that doesn't help your business start out. Well, why not go to the Midwest where the cost is cheaper and uh, if some of the top engineers want to uh, make the salaries, they can certainly move to the Midwest from either coast. And here's another part of it. Another surprise is that seven of the top ten cities for tech startups in, are in the Midwest. Places like Columbus, Ohio and Springfield, Illinois, along with Cedar Rapids and Dubuque, Iowa. So. That is the place to go. If you're starting out a business, that's the not, not the time to be spending enormous amounts of money that are not going to necessarily bring you anything back. All it's going to be is just uh, rent and taxes. So next up, I'm going to be talking, uh, all of the next articles I'm going to be talking about outer space because there's quite a bit about outer space in the news lately, including two satellites that I'll be talking about in just a second. But this first one is from Scientific American. And this I have a little bit of reference from... Uh, personal experience uh, because of a family member. Wanted by NASA, Space Telescope Director with spy credentials. They're talking about um, why is it that, um, well, I'll just read the first part of this too. Conspiracy theorists may wonder why does NASA's next major telescope director need top secret clearance. The space agency recently posted a one ad for a person to lead its James Webb Space Telescope program. In addition to aerospace engineering credentials and management experience, the candidate must have the highest possible level of security credentials. Um, having my father work in NASA during the uh, late 60s, early 70s in the Gemini and the NASA project, he was an electrical design engineer and worked on the designs for the backpacks the astronauts wore, um, wore while they were walking on the moon, um, part of the life support system. So he worked with the team. He was the electrical design engineer of the team that designed them. He had to go through top secret level security clearance. I remember him talking about the fact that friends, relatives were interviewed, they came out. I mean, the FBI actually came out and talked to even some of our neighbors and all kinds of references and, and things like that. I, I imagine they might have even talked to some of his uh, ex-teachers and stuff like that. Uh, I actually one time myself for a friend of mine got interviewed by a general because he wanted a friend of mine that uh, I grew up with wanted security clearance and was going to work in the missile silos. And he did end up getting the job working in the missile silos as one of the two people with their hands on the key. And I had to talk to a general and answer all kinds of questions about the childhood, so uh, about their childhood. And the reason being with this too is it caused a problem in the past when the uh, Hubble Space Telescope was built because of a lot of the non-contact between the Defense Department and NASA. They weren't able to get all of the information they possibly could, and it ended up being a mistake in the Hubble Space Telescope and some of the accuracy of the Hubble Space Telescope and having to fix it later because it was not taking as clear as shots. Part of that problem was due to the fact of the Defense Department, which actually with the spy satellites and stuff like that has some of the latest and greatest technology, was kind of reluctant to communicate back and forth with the people working on the Hubble Space Telescope. So I think they kind of want to avoid that this time and not run into that same kind of problem to where they designed this uh, James Webb Space Telescope and then there's some kind of problem with the optics because people weren't communicating. So if they give this guy the right kind of top secret security clearance to where he can have access to all the different information, um, then maybe this will be a, a one-shot deal and we won't have to be flying astronauts up to correct this telescope because of some mistakes made. But anyway, that's my thoughts based on some of my experience and talking to my father about it. And now on to the satellites. We have two satellites that reached Mars, one after the other. 
the first one was the NASA Maven, and that reached on, let me get the date here, September 22nd, followed shortly on the 24th by the Mangalayan Indian Telescope, uh, the telescope Satellite Mission. And uh, it's interesting, this is the article I've got from The Verge, and some of the terminology and things they talk about here I've kind of, uh, I have some dispute with. Um, first, the title of the article, Indian Spacecraft Reaches Mars for Less Than It Cost to Make Gravity, talking about the movie Gravity and the expense I think it costs. Yeah, here it is, $74 million is what it costs. But anyway, I'm going to read a little bit from this. The odds were stacked against us, Modi said, and he was one of the um, people that was uh, part of the Mars Orbiter Mission team. The odds were stacked against us, Modi said at a press conference today. When you are trying to do something that has not been attempted before, it is a leap into the unknown, and space is indeed the biggest unknown out there. Um, they were not technically attempting something that has not been done before. There's decades and decades of history, and believe me, if any of you have been to college from like the 1970s on, you've probably been to college with a lot of people from China and India that were engineering students that were sent over here to learn a lot of the stuff that we had already previously known. So. They were not just exactly, and I know the article talks about well for a while there because of the uh, nuclear um, explode, uh, because India actually did some nuclear test explosions that we isolated them from uh, uh, the, our um, technology and stuff like that. They were not isolated by any means. It was basically a political ploy. The uh, engineering students had all of the mistakes that we made in the past and all the technology. NASA freely shares its information. They had. Uh, you know, reams and reams and reams of stuff to work with. So um, um, not that I'm not giving them great credit. I mean, even China tried recently to get a Mars uh, satellite in orbit, and they failed. So it's still running around a 50-50 rate. And uh, the, the other thing they're talking about this, too, is they, did, they, they say they did the almost impossible. Well, a 50-50 shot is not almost the impossible. I mean, it's still pretty likely that if you do send a few missions to Mars, you're going to have some successes, and I believe in the future they're even going to increase. But I still give kudos to India for what they've done, and I like to see um, a fifth spacefaring uh, nation. In the, well, if you count the EU as one nation, it's actually a conglomeration. So you have four nations, actually, that are spacefaring nations. Now you have uh, Russia, China, the European Space Union. Now you have India, and then you have the United States, so there's five actually, if you count the European Union as being, you know, a conglomerate. But, yeah, we have five space uh, fairing facilities now competing against each other, and I'm hoping it gets us as NASA off our butts and maybe spend some more money to get things done on Mars. Um, there's also what I'm going to do is I'm going to include some links here. I think, actually, the best summaries I've found lately, uh, I think because of the science geeks keeping it edited and updated, I'm going to give you the wiki links to the MAVEN program and the wiki links to the Mars Orbiter mission, both at uh, arrived in Mars within two days of each other. The the MAVEN mission obviously is just going to do some very basic studies and I think it's more a test mission for them to decide what they're going to do from here. It's going to be very basic measurements of uh, methane levels and different things like that, whereas our ours obviously is going to be a little bit more technologically advanced and it's also, as I've said in the past, it's going to provide us with some additional backup communication with our rovers on the planet so it's going to perform a lot of different functions. But uh, Give India a few more shots at it and stuff like that, and maybe they will even be uh, talking about sending men into outer space. And I don't mean low Earth orbit to an international space station, as good as that is, is for uh, providing uh, scientific and engineering type of information. I still want to see astronauts heading back to the moon and on to Mars, because um, that's where our future lies, really. Our future does not rely on just staying in low Earth, Earth orbit. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, whoever gets in office next as president provides us with the funds to... Uh, actually allow NASA to do some great things because NASA is really capable of a lot and I would hate to see us be uh, and also ran with a lot of other uh, and being the ones behind a lot of other spacefaring nations and uh, technological groups. So anyway, that's it for this week. As usual, all the articles to everything will be down below and I uh, thank you for everybody that contributes to the TDD report and I will catch you guys next week.